Ian Burrell. Hello, I'm Adam Basur. Hi, I'm Nick O'Jaro. We are Team 16 Hyla Engineering Solutions, and this is our Battle Frog Group Goldberg Design Phase 2 report. The team has created our DP2 report of the BRD kit with various items to reference as the project has progressed past the halfway point. First, the project management section shows the team's updated GAN chart and design structure matrix. Afterwards, the team goes into information on intellectual property, which includes information on five patents related to our BRG design. Concept generation and selection continues the report as the team displays CAD models of each station's final solution. The team discusses how the three stations relate to fifth grade physics concepts and the process of selecting a final solution in this section as well. Next, the failure modes and effective analysis identifies the potential failures of each station and the actions taken to address these potential failures. The team then presents the economic analysis section, which discusses the team's investment proposal and displays the information in a cash flow diagram. Lastly, the team concludes the design phase two with a statement regarding the future plans for the BRG kit. Our GAN chart represents what we've accomplished so far and what we still have to do for our battle program Goldberg machine. The blue sections represent tasks that have been completed or are currently in process. As you can see, most of this project has been completed as we are approaching the end of our schedule and currently working on a final prototype. The red section represents the upcoming tasks which we have not yet started. The only upcoming task is the final presentation of our project, which will be held on December 13th of this year. The design structure matrix, or DSM for short, represents how we approach each task or project. As you can see, most of these tasks have been sequential. This is because we were usually instructed to only work on one task at a time by our management team. Our industrial design phase, however, was an exception, as we worked on tasks for multiple aspects of the project at the same time, as you can see here. As with most of our projects, our design took inspiration from previous inventions and innovations. We documented their respective patents we used for the design phase here. This patent, the escalator system with customizable step, allows an escalator to use a custom-made step. We could use this idea to make our own step that should hold a ping pong ball and carry it up an escalator. The bowling ball return system, while generally used for bowling balls, uses motors to push the ball up again by the track. We could scale down this design and use it to push a ping pong ball up a similar but smaller track to a higher elevation. The ball runaway toy, used as a children's toy, incorporates a unique track design made for small balls. We could use the same track design to move our ping pong ball through the machine between the stations. The house motorized pulley is a mechanical solution to using a simple motor to operate a pulley. This could be used in junction with the Arduino motor that we have been provided in order to operate the pulley within the machine. The golf ball cup ejecting apparatus uses a simple spring apparatus to pop a golf ball out of the cup. We could use a weaker spring and a smaller cup with a ping pong ball in our machine. For every patent we chose to take inspiration from, the expiration date has passed on. This way, using them will bring us no financial burden. For each of our stations, we began to create ideas by having each of us draw five designs on, on a poster. Then each separate design was combined to create a station that would then be analyzed to see how well it would work for our purpose. We analyzed these stations using a screening table and a scoring table to determine what we wanted to move forward with as a group. Station 1 provides an entertaining and meaningful presentation of fifth grade physics of concepts of potential and kinetic energy. Both tables agreed that the escalator tower would be the chosen station after scoring the highest on each table. The escalator tower had a lower cost, lower height requirement, and an easier assembly than the highest scoring station. This is the CAD model of station one. The ball will enter the station, go up the escalator, down the down ramps, and out of the station. Station two went through a similar process to optimize the station's addressment of fifth grade physics concepts with gravity. When the team moved on to the scoring exercise, the design with the highest score of 3.55 was the hill. The hill was, the cho was chosen as the team's final solution for its most optimal display of concept of gravity Initial speed allows 
the ball to make it over to the other side. This is CAD model designed at Beach Chester Station 2. Ball enter the station, go over the hill, around the curve, and into the next station. Station 3, the team's final station, demonstrates fifth grade physics concepts of work. In the scoring section of the cup, in the scoring section, the cup pulling was the highest rank on both tables. The station was the highest rank on both tables. The station was operating an Arduino input of height that determined by the user through the concept of work. This is the CAD model of the design for station three. The ball will enter the station, go into the cup, go into the pole, be pulled by the pulley, which is powered by the Arduino, and go down and down. There are many different ways that each station can fail, and our group must determine how to fix these failures. For station one, the highest rank severity issue would be if the down ramp breaks. While the ball moves throughout the station, the down ramp needs to stay stable to ensure that the ball stays on course and that the ramps don't fall over and break. Our group would test the down ramps uh, structural integrity by applying pressure to points on the ramp to make sure that they are strong enough for our purpose of keeping the ball on the track. If the ramp breaks, our group would then upgrade to more strength. Station 2 is rather simple when it comes to how it can fail. The most severe failure for Station 2 would be if the track is not connected well enough and the ball can't smoothly follow the intended path. The path need, needs to have two parallel tracks that follow each other in a way that will allow the ball to stay on the track without falling off or causing the ball to slow down. We will determine how parallel the tracks are to one another by taking measurements for the ruler and ensure that the separation the track is the same throughout the station. We would also use better materials to make sure that the station would not shift in any way. There are several ways that station three can fail, but the most severe form of failure would be if the Arduino does not run properly, causing the station to not start. This would be caused by human error and to be seen in the code. The code would be looked over and then tested again until the station works as Better instructions would be created to make sure that the students know what they need to do to make sure that the station works properly. As mentioned in design phase one, the team anticipates a quarterly revenue of $168,750 and a quarterly cost of $125,000 along with a fixed cost of $11,250 per year in overhead. This gives the team a profit of $43,750 for quarters one, two, and three for each year. For quarter four of each year, the team will have a profit of $32,500 due to overhead. With this in mind, our cash flow diagram expresses the team's request of a loan of $250,000 with a quarterly interest rate of 3% to be given at the start of year one from VTEPS Inc. The quarterly repayment starts at the beginning of year two and finishes at the end of year three. A one-year grace period for the repayment of the loan is requested as the team looks to first make an initial profit after using much of the loan on developing and manufacturing systems for the VRG kit. Also, the team plans on using a quarterly repayment system as a show of good faith to VTEPS Inc. This way, the company will receive some of their investment back gradually rather than a lump sum at the end of year two. After finding the future value returned to VTEPS Inc. totaling $356, $1,444.22. The team then calculates the return on investment to be 42.58%, making this a very lucrative investment for VTEP State. Design phase two involves an update on the management of the project, a discussion on intellectual property, generation and selection of concepts, FMEA examinations, and an economic investment proposal. The team has made progress on its schedule in the second phase by creating concepts that were then analyzed and resulted in the selection of final solutions that were physically constructed. The second phase did have initial prototypes, but the team has yet to create a functioning prototype nor a final product. With the final design phase ahead, the team is preparing to do these tasks and finish them on time with our December 13th deadline. Again, we are Team 16 Hyla Engineering Solutions, and we would like to thank you for listening to our Design Phase 2 report.